and he was at the open door, readying to, to go with his parachute on and all these men lined up behind him and a shell, some sort of flat detonated out beside the aircraft. And he was, he was ripped by, by shrapnel that came in through the door. So he, he was thrown back into the plane and he stood up, he stood up full of, full of shrapnel and he, he got back to the door and he shouted, follow me. And out he went. And his parachute deployed, so he managed to, you know, he, 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 you know, he landed, he landed, but by the time his men got to him, he was dead, and he was already his, his parachute had fallen on top of his his lifeless body, so that he was wrapped as as though in his shroud, and he was the first, you know, he was the first U.S. soldier to die on D-Day, and just the enormity of it, and these are two. These are two soldiers out of all the, uh, something like 175,000 men, I think, managed to get off of Sword and Gold and Juno and Omaha and Utah on that first day. And there was a glacier coming behind them. I mean, the, 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 the amount of men that were lost and the amount of vehicles that were lost on that first day, but there was this unstoppable glacier coming in behind them from, from the civilized world. But, but 175, I think it's 175,000, but were, were, were through the Atlant Hitler's Atlantic Wall, you know, by the end of that first day, and, and, and were able to begin the, the, the fight back. And you know, and <clears throat> that's how freedom was won. That's how it was done. And that that they talk about it now as if it's theirs to give as though that freedom belongs to those politicians, as though it's theirs to give back to us. I'll leave it there. <laughs>